top of the hour, Gunther Weasel with the tune God is an Astronaut. And we also heard a song from Idette and the Sunrunners with She's a Playa. Now, this is a song I think I might have heard on a hip hop station. No? <laughs> She's a player. Introduce yourselves one by one. The band in the studio with me, Idette and the Sunrunners. Hello, I'm Idette. I'm the, basically the lead vocalist in the Sunrunners. I play uh, mandolin and banjo. <laughs> Is, uh, is an entity that is uh, completely unknown. It's a religion. It's just, it is yeah. what it is. This street sweet sweeper is like, we're a bunch of dudes, really awesome dudes. I don't know if you know that. And we're from all different like, bands. I mean, not that I'm a cool guy, because I'm from like some band. Listen, I don't play for less than heavy money. These days, Three Sweepers are more about making heavy money. The heavier your riff, the heavier money you're gonna make. We only headline concerts. We should only headline concerts. You know what? I'm sick of this scene. I'm sick of this band. I'm sick of this beer. We had to become the superheroes of our town. And now we're building to the point where we're going to be the superheroes of a nation, man. <laughs> we're just normal people, you know what I mean? Like, we hang out, we drink beer, you know? You can't put your finger on it. You could probably put your finger in it, because I like that better. All we do, really, is we write songs just to drink beer at your show for free. And you nerds pay us. And we think it's great, you know? Stop, we think it's great that you pay us to go drink beer at your show. Drink beer at your show. We drink beer at your show. Please give it up for our lovely ring girl. I don't think none of you are ready for round two.
don't be afraid to call them foul on one of these. I don't know, some of them do it. Make money, money, make money, money. Oh! Hey! Foul! <laughs> foul! You foul. Get off the barricade. Foul. You're injected. Get off. How's the MySpace going for you? It's oh, like incredible. A, it's, it's we talked to 174 thing. friends. It's and great. It's, it's really t it's taken on a life of its own, and um, it's, it's been terrific. Sometimes we have bands stop by the Edge Studios and uh, tame down a little bit. We call this one a Capital Underground six-string moment. Here's Nonpoint, Capital Underground Television. Plug in. Edge Fest, uh, fondest memory. Uh, it was probably during Bullet. Uh, it, the crowd was going absolutely insane. Uh, followed up by my next fondest memory was watching Sebastian Bach. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel about seeing Nine Point Acoustic. Awesome. Yeah? How about you? Beautiful. What's your name? Ken. That's just Ken? That's it. You kind of like McLovin from that movie, mm -hmm. right? Nonpoint acoustic, 15 awesome. people, it's just you guys, that's it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, where are you guys from? What's your name? We're from Galloway. My right, cool. Jason, this is Lynn. All right. Keep going. Thank you. 
Seth Static started in the hardcore scene of the QE2 back in the early 90s with Master Plan. He's still doing his thing. Numerous CDs on Ruckus Records, winning video awards at Scribble Jam. Now he's back with a new CD called Shotgun. We hit the streets with Seth Static in Albany, New York, and here's what he had to say about his long and winding career. It's right here on Capital Underground Television. Plug in. Like you just don't care. Reading the word, now you gotta observe. We see them signs of wonders being played to the curb. Because you prayed in church doesn't always mean it's gonna work. My early influence, man, the main cat that I, I, I would definitely say is Rakim. You know what I mean? Cats that were saying some, uh, you know what I mean? Like Karis One, you know what I'm saying? Rakim, Shabazz, Queen Latifah. There was a lot of groups back then that were actually saying something in their raps. You know what I'm saying? They had a little materialism type stuff in it, but uh, it was more or less about conscious material. You know what I mean? Everything that, that they had to say, man, I definitely absorbed, man. Specifically, like I said, Rock Kim, man, he was the main cat. You know, we had a lot of fools that were coming out, slick, break, run DMC. But the cats that really hit me, man, were always saying something on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Fresh beats, fresh lyrics. Definitely, I felt like they were speaking to me. So, I was born into hip-hop. I didn't know what hip-hop was. I was living it before I knew it even had a name. You know what I mean? Higher, we gonna take a step back in faith to look forward to grace. Gotta take it all in. Share with the globe. Now, practice love more than we have to hold. E.C. Ignite without a match for the S.E.V. I might light up your mind. First time I ever performed, kid, was like... It was such an adrenaline rush, man. It was better than any ride I've ever been on. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, specifically freestyles, you know, that was always real good for being cyphers with cats, man. And just coming off the top of the dome. Way back when, man, I didn't even, I didn't even know fools were writing lyrics. I just thought cats were coming off the top of the dome with it. Because everybody I knew was rapping off the top because they were describing things around them. My man's sneakers, you know what I'm saying? My man's chain, his bike, something that was going on. So that was what real hip-hop was to me. And I got that same adrenaline rush when I was up on stage, man. The first couple times I was on stage was like talent shows and all that. It wasn't like official shows, it was like talent shows, but no more talent shows, man. It's just strictly official shows in the 508. Man, I mean, I was always going to QB2 before I was even allowed to go into QB2. And I was ingratiated into the hardcore scene, man. Being where I'm from, you know what I'm saying, in Over Hill, I lived there until the day I got married. When I got married, you know what I'm saying? Me and wife, you know what I'm saying? Got up and moved out. But I was coming from Albert Hill, coming up to Q2, man, just seeing the shows. I remember the shows used to be at JV Stops up on Central Ave. The shows used to be at the, uh, the Post over here on um, on Washington Ave. And the backyard, it used to be on West Street. We used to go in the back and sit on cars and listen to the music, man. Seeing all these cats come out with Mohawks and like blue hair and, and these boots. I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. These cats were official. And what I gravitated towards, man, was just the, the heart of the music, the honesty that was in the music. And, and, and uh, the, the hunger that these cats had, had in the band, you know what I'm saying? It was definitely official, and it's something that influenced me since day one. I, was, I don't care what it is, rock and roll, hip-hop, soul, it don't matter to me. As long as you got heart, I'm in it. Man, listen, oh, man. I mean, since day one, I had a, I had a love to do, to do this music, man. And I remember from being in a group called Master Plan back in the day, back in like 92 to like 96. Just before I met those cats, man, 
Um, I was on tour for a year and a half with a, with a couple of bands, man, and I really love the road. I love the music, and I love the, the participation from the crowd to the MC, and I love the way shows were put together, from the hardcore scene to the hip-hop scene. Coming through with Master Plan here in Albany, man, we fly the whole entire area with flyers, man. Just black and white Master Plan flyers. My man Teddy Tall booked us for a show, and it was a wrap after that, man. We just kept getting shows. We kept building the resume. The bio was getting thicker, man. And just building up respect, you know what I'm saying? There's one white kid and two black Black hits. Three months later, we got the cover of Metroland Magazine, the first hip hop group to, to grace the cover of Metroland Magazine. Indigo, indigo, indigo. I tell you what changed it all. What changed it all here in the 518, man, is my crew pitch control music. You know what I'm saying? We had a dream back in 2000, man, to actually. Unify the scene, quote unquote unify, or at least start some type of a scene. Me and my man Dez got together, man. We started booking shows. We started putting out flyers. We started doing like little notebooks with like uh, uh, information about artists here in the 518, man. No matter where you was from, no matter what you was saying. I don't care if you was gangster, I don't care if you was street, I don't care if you was underground, I don't care if you was pop, it don't matter. As long as it's real hip hop, that's what we're talking. I don't care if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, that's exactly what we did. Five and a half years, we were solid, you know what I'm saying? We still solid, then cats started growing a little bit and started getting record deals, started going on tour, started doing collaborations with mainstream artists and doing all this other stuff, man. And we've done songs with Ice Cube, Evidence, you know what I'm saying, Jim Class Heroes, Kirk Franklin, you know what I'm saying? We've done songs with a lot of fools out there, man. So five minute hip hop is on the map. Pitch control is my heart, and we're still here eight years in front of it, you know what I'm saying? Big ups to my man Shice, my man Dez, I gotta bounce, kiddo, peace. Yes, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. As yo, one, two, one, two, seven static. Yo, 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 yo. Take a chance, don't let it pass you by. Experience the goodness of
Beautiful women making beautiful music right here in Capital Land. Upon arrival, Ten Year Van, Cersei, the list goes on and on. Katie Haverly, she's another one of those women who are making strides in the Capital Region scene. And now she's here on Capital Underground Television. Hi, I'm Katie Haverly. Hi, I'm Jonathan Cohen. You're watching Capital Underground Television. <laughs> John and I have been playing together on and off for a very long time. Yeah. We probably started playing together in 2001. We got together for rehearsals and you couldn't really remember that we'd all played together before, but we did. Pretend you were like from Long Island. <laughs> so we got started playing. <laughs> I was in middle school, it was the band. Hi, I'm Linda Burkhardt I'm from Nassau. We came here tonight to see Katie and it was excellent. I feel like my influences are constantly changing. Um, I've been influenced a lot by local musicians in the area, but I also was originally very influenced by old folk writers, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, Joan Baez, um, Judy Collins. And when I first started writing, when I first started writing, I was a very, very folky. But as I, um, I know somebody that used to do something. As far as musically goes, how did that all come about? You the family musicians? Well, my, my father, you know, sings, plays the guitar, and we would always. Did you he know, teach you? He taught me a few things when I first started learning in high school, and um, you know, my family's always been very musical, and we would always go camping and sing around the campfire. My sister and I were always like in choir and doing musicals and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so you already know how to sing. Now you just had to put the guitar. Exactly. With it. Okay. A lot of different people, uh, James Jamerson, Paul McCartney, Tony Levin, and then uh, in terms of uh, gravitating towards singer-songwriters, I used to go and sit in at that open mic that was at the Lark Tavern and the Larkin and the Fuse Box yeah. and then the Larkin and then the Lark Tavern. With Mother Judge and... And I like that. I, as I'm a bass player and I like the challenge of... Uh, I'm an educated bass player, and I really like when some songwriters throw you things that are not in the book, and then you really have to be creative. There's no, you know, there's no structure like you've been taught here, and and it's just more pure music. You know, sometimes you, you, you get educated in math, yeah, this gets you out of the math. Um, so I, I very much enjoy playing with some songwriters particularly, and then the great talent, Katie Haverly, is a very nice human being, besides being a very talented individual. Two of my requirements. Okay. I'm not, I'm not me. She's not me. Hi, my name's Lauren. I'm from Glenmont. And I thought Katie had a beautiful voice. She reminds me of Aunt Ani DeFranco. <laughs> Well, me and Frank Bosco and Troy Cole worked on the whole record 
um, it started in January of 07, so we spent a year and a half on the record. And I didn't get to go with John and Pete until halfway through the process of recording the album. Yeah, like October, about yeah. a year ago, right? Yeah, about a year ago. So then we started folding them in um, to the recording, so there's a couple other drummers and bass players on some of the tunes, but because we were starting to get together as a band, it was great to be able to you know, finally record. And the, and the songs changed so much on the record, a lot of songs got thrown away, arrangements changed, um, and so the more that the record got closer to finish, the more songs Pete and John ended up playing on. Katie Haverly is so hot and I really want to make out with her. I'm Augie. I'm with Linda. <laughs> she bought the tickets. I own a hill far away from the din and the day. The sun escaped from those it shamed. But the moon is a creeping around the bend. And you whisper things you shouldn't. got lots of gold, lots of bling going here. So what you're, what you're doing is you're showing off your heavy money, what you've made off the first CD, Ghetto from the get-go. What is it with this heavy money situation? Ralph, all I gotta tell you is, when you're at the top of the heavy money food chain, everybody's gonna try to knock you down. The more heavy money you have, more problems you now have. What is Money you're gonna make, Ralph. Okay. That's why we're the heavy money millionaires now. Yes, you are.